area of, of, of scripture that I want to look at um, this morning is, is going to be primarily in the book of Hebrews. And we've been talking about patterns. And the first week we looked at how God moves foundationally, that, that God is a God who deals with foundations. Um, and just off the cuff, I think Kristen did a really good job of, of, of showing how that worked in her life. God, you know, deals with foundations, laid a foundation first. In that case, foundation was, Lord, get my life together, um, and then build on that. That's a, that's a real good example of how God works. So God deals with foundations. And then last week we looked um, at how God deals with foundations in building the house. And we looked at how he worked with uh, Moses with the tabernacle. Then he worked with Solomon with the temple. And then he moved over into the book of Acts and how the, the apostles were, were used to set a pattern and a foundation for the church. And we're going to be looking at some things further on down the line, more specifically um, about how God orders the life of the church. How many people believe God orders the life of the church? Mm-hmm. And so we're going to be looking at some things there. But this week, I, what, what I want to look at, um, I want to look at the foundational doctrines of Christ. Foundational, don't get nervous because I use the word doctrine. Um, doctrine simply means teaching. Um, I want to look at the foundational doctrines, the, the, the teachings of Christ. And by, by the foundational doctrines of Christ, what I'm referring to, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about if we were to go through the New Testament, through the Gospels, through the writings of Paul, James, Peter, what we would discover would be those things that if you were to ask Jesus, Jesus, what do you believe? Did you ever wonder what? Jesus, what do you believe about X, Y, and Z? What, you know, what do you believe? Have you ever noticed that the churches have a tendency to have a really broad range of stuff that they believe? Some of it's foundationally sound and some of it isn't. And we want to make sure that in our lives that we're building on sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine. So the, by the foundational doctrines, um, that's what we're going to be looking at. The book of Hebrews... Um, Kendrick read, and it started by talking about the Melchizedek priesthood. And I can understand why Paul said the rest of what he said, um, you know, when you start talking about the Melchizedek priesthood, because how many of you all believe Jesus is a high priest? Jesus is a high priest. Amen. He is a high priest, but he's not a high priest after the order of Aaron. He's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of priesthood. And a lot of people say, well, man, I want to get into that. And that's what Paul wanted to share with them. Paul wanted to, to deal with this priesthood that Jesus has. But he couldn't. It's not that he wouldn't, he couldn't. But in Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at verse 10, it says, and, well, I'm going to start at verse 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission son though he was he learned obedience by what he suffered and then once made perfect somebody say perfect, perfect. he became the source somebody say source of eternal salvation for all who obey him once being made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation, he first had to learn obedience. We're talking about Jesus. He had to learn obedience by the things he suffered. And then once he became perfect, he becomes the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Does this make sense? And then he was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. We have much to say about this, but, and this is where I wanted to get, it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer, I'm reading out of the today's New International Version, it says you no longer try to understand. Other translations say of whom we have, we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you're dull of hearing. Now he's writing to the church. He said, I have a lot of things I want to share you, but I can't share them because you're dull of hearing. 
You don't even try to understand stuff anymore. Talking to the church. Because in fact, <laughs> in fact, when for the time, you ought to be teachers. You need somebody to teach you again. When for the, you, you should be teaching other folk by now. But you have need that somebody still teach you. Because you're dumb of hearing. You know, you, you, you don't even try to understand stuff no, any, anymore. You know, you heard it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Now you're hearing it, and what you hear, it doesn't even resonate anymore. Aren't y'all glad that he wasn't writing this letter to us? You don't even try to understand. In fact, by now, you should be teaching other people. But you need somebody to teach you again. Now, notice what he says. The first principles of the oracles of God. Back to the basics. The first principles of the oracles of God. In other words, these are the very first things you should know as a believer. This is the foundational stuff. This is the milk of the word. The, this is the basic. This is Christianity 101. And y'all don't even have that right yet. Aren't y'all glad he wasn't writing to us? Special ed. <laughs> he said, you have need of milk, not strong meat. You know, I think about my grandson, who I have renamed since he's been here. His name is Junior Whopper. <laughs> Junior Whopper. When he was first born, milk. That's what you give him, milk. You don't even try to give him anything solid. You give him milk. He, his system cannot digest solid food. So he gets milk. But then as his system develops, then you start giving him something that has a little bit more substance, like some cereal. You know, then he can progress. Then he can get some chicken nuggets and then he progresses he can get some french fries then he progresses and then sooner or later you know grandpapa want to take him out to eat ask him what he want and he wants a ribeye steak stay on the milk junior whopper but but he has to grow you understand what i'm saying so as he learns how to use milk and digest milk his system now can produce things that have more substance. Does this make sense? That's how our spiritual life is. That's how our spiritual life is. It says, now listen, you have need of milk, but not of solid food. Because anybody that lives on milk, they're unskillful. In the, now note, they're unskillful in the word of righteousness. Righteousness. Because he is a baby. Strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use, somebody say use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let's go on unto perfection. Interesting word. Let's go on unto perfection, which simply means maturity. It's not sinlessness. It's Christian maturity. It's maturity. Let's go on. 
leaving the principles. Now, it's not saying ignoring the principle. He's saying once you have these foundations laid, now you can build on those foundations and you can go to maturity. You can begin to deal with some stuff dealing with the things of God that aren't milk, it's meat. I've been guilty in the past, not here, but I've been guilty in the past of trying to give folk meat who really can't even digest milk yet. So I had to learn. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation. So we're still talking about foundations. Y'all with me? We're still talking foundations. We're not, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. All of that is milk. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of note baptisms, plural, meaning there's more than one. Laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. That's all milk. And the church is more divided on those six teachings than anything. How do you get baptized? Well, should you be don't? Do you got to go all the way under? Or can I be sprinkled? Do I have to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Or can I be baptized in Jesus' name only? And if you weren't baptized in Jesus' name only, you really ain't saved no how. Milk. Babies. Doctrine of baptism, laying on of, of hands, gets into impartations and healings through the laying on of hands. And it's all milk. Resurrection of the dead, milk. Eternal judgment, milk. Then once you have those things, once you're secure in those things, now we can go on to perfection. Now we can go on to maturity. Now we can begin to talk about the priesthood of Christ. Now we can really begin to unpack what God's doing in the earth. Now we can really begin to understand this whole process of renewal and restoration. But you got to get this stuff first. Y'all still with me? And Paul says, and this we will do if God permits. It's impossible. I wasn't going to read this verse, but I got to throw it in there. Then we'll move on. He said, it's impossible for those who have been once enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit. How do you share in the Holy Spirit? Mm, mm, mm. They have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age. Folk, I'm, folk, God's got good stuff for us. He wants us to taste the powers of the age to come. Taste the power of the age to come. What in the world, Paul, are you talking about? Well, that's what I want to get into. But that's still milk. <laughs> If, if they fall away to renew them again back to repentance. This is going full circle. It's impossible to renew them again back to repentance. 